join the party. Have a hearty glass of rum. Hello everybody, it's Adam. Today I'm going to show you how to make easy, authentic ramen. This is the ramen that most of us in America are used to eating, and God knows in college I had tons of it. But in Japan, ramen is very refined, and chefs study for years and years and years to make really, really good, beautiful ramen. But today, this is going to take a little bit less than an hour. We're going to make our own broth, pack it with flavor, and it's awesome to serve to people if they're coming over for a movie or if you just want to have a nice lunch yourself. So let's get started. All right, to begin, I'm gonna make my own ramen broth. And for all intents and purposes, you're pretty much just making a stock. I'm gonna begin with onion, garlic, and fresh ginger. You're not gonna actually eat any of this. It's all gonna be discarded afterwards, but you just wanna pack in as much flavor as possible into the broth. I'm gonna chop up my onion nice and coarsely. You really don't have to be too fussy about chopping the onion because it's all going to be discarded. You're only using it for the flavor. So don't fuss too much. Next, I'm going to take six whole cloves of fresh garlic and I'm just going to unwrap them and smash them. You don't even have to chop them up. Again, you're just using the garlic for the flavor. You're not going to be eating it. I'm just going to cut the tip off the garlic because you don't want to eat that. And I'm just going to take the blade of my knife, give it a quick smash, unwrap it. And that's it. I'm not even going to chop it. And now it's time for me to prepare my ginger. Fresh ginger looks like this, almost like goblin fingers. You can find it in any grocery store. And you don't want this brown skin, so you're just going to peel it. And for today, I'm just going to use about a one inch by one inch slice and chop it up just a little bit. Ginger is used all the time in Asian cooking, and it really adds a lot of flavor. just going to give it two chops to make four pieces. Once again, you will not be eating this, just for flavor. All right, I'm going to put my onion, garlic, and ginger aside for a second, and now it's time to prepare my meat. I've got two pounds of boneless country-style pork ribs. It is a really inexpensive cut of meat, but you get a lot of flavor because of the fat content and because the meat is so tender. It's great for cooking fast ramen because it cooks up in no time and it's really cheap. I've got two pounds of the boneless pork ribs here. Right now I'm going to take just a third of it and chop it up roughly and use it to flavor my broth. This is the pork you won't be eating. The other stuff you'll actually put into your soup and slice nicely. But this pork is reserved for just the broth. I'm really chopping this into tinier pieces because the more surface area of the actual meat that you have, the more browning that's gonna happen in the pan, which makes for more flavor in your broth. Doesn't have to be pretty at this point. Now it's time to start cooking my broth. I'm gonna take a medium-sized soup pot and add a tablespoon of oil and put my burner onto medium-high heat. When the pan and oil are nice and hot, I'm going to add up my chopped meat and let it cook for about 10 minutes. Alright, while I'm waiting for this pork to cook, I'm going to prepare the rest of my meat that I'm actually going to eat in my soup. So let's get going. Alright, I'm going to take each one of my ribs and I'm gonna cut it about a half an inch thick. And these are the slices of meat that you're actually gonna want in your soup. You really don't want anything more than a mouthful, especially if you're using chopsticks, because you're gonna end up with a big mess. My pork has been cooking for about 10 minutes. It's nice and golden brown. And now it's time to add my onions, garlic, and ginger. 
I'm gonna dump it right in the pot, give it a quick stir, and let it cook for about three minutes. After about three minutes, your garlic, onion, and ginger will be a little bit tender. That's when it's time to add your liquid. One quart of low-sodium vegetable stock, and one quart of low sodium chicken stock. I use low sodium so I can control the amount of salt that's going into my broth. I'm using vegetable and chicken because again, I wanna pack as much of that ramen flavor into my broth as possible in the shortest amount of time. Just dump this right into the pan. After you add your liquid, just give the pan a quick scrape just to pick up all the brown bits so you get as much flavor as possible. And then cover your pot and let your broth cook for 30 minutes. I'll meet you after. All right, it's been about half an hour and my broth is done. My house smells awesome. I'm going to take the lid off and I'm gonna pour it in my pan through a mesh strainer. I wanna get the onions and garlic and anything that's chunky, the pork, I want to get it all out. All I want is my clear, delicious broth. All right, I'm going to discard the onions, pork, and ginger. And I'm left with a gorgeous yellow broth. At this point, if you wanted to save your broth and put it in the freezer, that's cool. It'll last a couple of months or put it in the fridge for a couple of days until you really want it. But because I'm going to eat the ramen right now, I'm going to move on and add some more flavoring. I'm going to begin by adding two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Next, I'm going to add a tablespoon of mirin. Mirin is a Japanese cooking ingredient available in any grocery store. It tastes like a sweet mix of rice vinegar and soy sauce. And finally, half of a teaspoon of sesame oil. You only need a little bit of this stuff. A little goes a long way. All right, that's it for flavoring. Now I'm gonna take the meat that I prepared earlier and put it right into the pot. I'm gonna cover the pan back on medium heat and cook it for about five minutes until the pork is just a little tender. You don't want to overcook it. All right, while my soup and pork is cooking, it's time to get my noodles ready. Now, you see this cheap pack of ramen that you usually find in the store? The noodles actually are comparable to any noodle you're gonna find in a specialty Japanese market. So what I'm gonna do is boil a low saucepan full of water. I'm gonna take out my noodles from this package Oop, and just use those. This flavor packet right here, throw it away, nasty. All right, my water is boiling for my noodles. I'm gonna stick it in the water and just cook them for about four minutes. While my noodles and pork are cooking, I'm gonna get my garnish ready. You could add bok choy or spinach, but I prefer some fresh scallions, which I'm just gonna chop up into little pieces to put on top once everything's all together. I'm gonna to cut that little root tip off. And then just cut small pieces. And I'm just gonna cut little pieces on the bias, which is diagonally, just so it's pretty. All right, it's been about four minutes and my noodles are done. I'm just gonna take them right out of the pan and put them right into a nice big bowl. My noodles are in the bowl. I'm just gonna spoon in enough broth to make sure everything is submerged and as much pork as I want. All right, and now I'm just gonna add my scallions. and a hard-boiled egg, just like they do in Japan.
And that is my recipe for a really easy, really delicious, authentic bowl of ramen. You're probably going to have enough broth for four or five servings, so have some friends over. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. This recipe and others are on my website, adamcrowcatering.com, and you can watch for more episodes of my cooking show, Cook with Adam, on YouTube. See you next time. Join the party, have a hearty glass of rum.